You guys cradling your balls right now? Because that's what I do every time I watch this, man. You know? Just cradle them. For you, ballin'. You know? I, I wonder, though. Can ballin ball? That That is the main thing I've been wondering. Can he ball? I'll 1v1 him. Right? Like, come on. Come on. I challenge ballin to a 1v1. See, see, who, see who's really Mr. Ballin. You know what I'm saying? Serious, delivered in story format, and you come to the right place because that's all we do, and we upload once a week. So, if that's of interest to you, the next time the like button is asleep. You know exactly what I'm talking about. A 54 year old man called Ricky you know Williams exactly stood on the about. riverbank, casting out his line into the waters of Dismal Creek in Western Virginia. Ricky was hoping to get lucky and Dismal catch Creek. trout, but he'd been out here fishing for 30 minutes so far, and there were no bites. Normally, Ricky wouldn't care because he loved just fishing for hours and hours at a time. But today, he and his dog, who was right with him, were really hungry because they'd been out in these woods camping for several weeks now and their food supply was so finally dwindling hungry. down to the end. And so if they didn't catch any fish today, they might not eat. Now, for context, where Ricky was fishing, Dismal Creek, despite its bleak name, it was actually a beautiful secluded spot on top of a mountain that was on the Appalachian Trail. The Appalachian Trail is a very famous 2200 mile long trail that runs up and down the east coast of the United States. And why that is relevant... Dude, is the Appalachian Mountains are cool, but also scary. Actually... Gartago! Gartago! Gartago, thank you so much for Ruthless, toothless, Would you rather never eat pasta again or never eat pizza again? Never eat pasta. Never. Never eat pasta again. Yeah. Maybe. Shit. You know what? The only. Mm. Okay, you're distracting me. Stop. 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 You're, distra you're distracting me. Stop it right now. Stop. Is because there's this. Well, I, I was saying something. Oh yeah, there is a movie that was created just for me. It was a movie about uh, all the weird disappearances. Hello, Bionic Pig here. I like being pegged. I'm gonna go on the record that it wasn't me. There is a movie that was made that they have a trailer for, and it's about national forests and how people get lost in them and shit. Stunlocked? I'm not stunlocked. Thank you so much, Shadow Mercer. Nice to be back. Oh, uh, one of the first ones to see clips of Poe out of context. I'm not Poe. I think you're at the wrong. You're at the wrong stream. I have, I have absolutely no idea what I was talking about. Special code for people that hike on the Appalachian Trail, and the code, which all yeah, it's like a missing four one one movie, but it's like um. But it's a movie hikers know is basically if you come across another hiker on the Appalachian Trail it is your responsibility to help them if they need yeah help. the random stairs in the their woods. responsibility to help you if you need help so it's this community of hikers that are always looking to help each other and so Ricky was very aware of this is code that this, on the is Appalachian that what this Trail, story is gonna be and he was secretly hoping as he cast his line over and over again and didn't get any bites that a hiker or a group of hikers might come by this area and maybe they would see him and come down and learn that he needed food and they might just give him some of their food. But another half hour passed and no hikers came by and still Ricky could not catch any fish. But then suddenly, okay. Ricky's dog, who was right next to him, began to whine the police, and kind police, of began the shifting police, around. Do like those police police the police in return for the police policing the police? Yes. Sensing a predator in the area or something. But as Ricky was trying to calm his dog down, he began to hear a voice in the woods right behind him. Somebody was moving towards him. And when Ricky heard this voice, it's the Kobe on the man. one hand, he was pretty excited because maybe this is a hiker who can give him some food. Oh, shit. But on the other hand, Ricky couldn't help but feel really uneasy. Now, you need to understand that Ricky was an older guy. He was kind of frail. And over the past few weeks that he'd been camping with his dog, you know, as his food supply had run down, he had become skinnier you, and Butterbeard. skinnier and skinnier. And so he really did not pose any sort of threat to anybody. He's like this weak, older man. 
Now, generally speaking, the Appalachian Trail was a very safe place, but over the last few decades, there had actually been several murders that took place on the Appalachian Trail. And in fact, one of those killings took place less than two miles away from where Ricky was fishing with his dog. And in that double homicide, a very well-known killer named Randall Lee Smith had stabbed and shot to death two hikers. And so while Ricky was, What is happening up here? Why, why do I... Is really looking for help. What the, what the hell? What, huh? From okay. fellow hikers, at the same time, he couldn't help but feel somewhat apprehensive. Because again, Ricky was like this small, frail guy, and Ricky was well aware of these murders, and he was well aware of the fact that... Go! What the fuck? Why can't I hear it? I gotta wait. I gotta run it back. God damn it. Sorry. If I get that many subs, we're, we're running the alert. so much for 25 gifted extreme python dude how how extreme is that python though i gotta know what's the girth what's the width huh huh thank you so much though that's that's actually insane oh my god that he was super close to one of the I, I, I think i think is this your first stream too sites and so ricky Jesus. was totally on edge as he's listening to this male voice get closer and closer and then finally this man in his early 30s steps out from the tree line and he looks over and he sees ricky and for a second the two men just kind of look at each other but then this guy just grinned at ricky and said hey how you doing and immediately ricky felt relieved because not the coming man from looking at this guy not the coming man at all very likely he was not a threat the man introduced himself as as Scott Johnston, and he told Ricky he was actually camping in the area with a friend. I don't like that they're that we're showing a real photo of Scott Johnston. Is this guy is this guy a murderer? Is is he gonna is he is he about to kill someone here? We recently found out grandpa is addicted to Viagra. No one is taking it harder than grandma. I get it. I get it. I see what you, that was, I get it. I get it. And they were out here fishing, just like Ricky. And Ricky pretty much immediately said, oh great, nice to meet you. Do you have any food for me? And Scott was like, absolutely. And he dug into his bag that he had with him and he pulled out a couple energy bars and a bag of chips and he threw them over to Ricky. And he also gave some fresh bait to Ricky so he too could cast out again. And for the next couple of hours, hmm. Scott and Ricky just stood on the riverbank and fished together. And after a while, the trout did start biting and they did start catching fish. So the day kind of turned into a great outing for Ricky. And it got even better because as soon as the men were done fishing, Scott asked Ricky if he wanted to join him and his friend back up at the campsite for dinner. And remember, Ricky had no food, so this was an amazing invitation. And he said, yes, of course, I'd love to join you. So the two men uh, packed up their stuff. I don't know. I don't know if I would uh, if I'd head out there, you know, I... I, I I, I would say no if it was me. But you know, I'm I'm what I'm what the cool people call a bitch. You know what I'm saying? Right as the sun was going down and then they began walking. That's what all the cool kids at school called me, you know? Like like a bitch, loser, uh choir boy, the F slur. They they were they were just joshing around though, you know. They they just like they're just they're just being, you know they're, they're just Fuck it around. <laughs> walking back into the forest where Scott had emerged from. And as they were walking, Scott's fishing pole got tangled on a low hanging branch and he was really struggling to get it out of the tree. And so finally he just told Ricky to, you know, go on ahead. My campsite's right up there. It's a straight shot. Just go up the hill and you'll see it. Ricky asked Scott if he was sure, and Scott said, no, it's totally fine, go ahead. So Ricky said, okay, and he walked the rest of the way up the hill, and then when he walked out of the tree line into the clearing where Scott's campsite was, immediately what Ricky noticed was this enormous man who was like twice the size of Scott, and so four times the size of Ricky, kind of hunched over the campfire. And this huge man who presented- Coming man? 
Actually, no, it, it wouldn't be Kami Man. Kami Man is like a, a slender, gross, decrepit creature that's just covered in slime. Presumably was Scott's friend. He heard Ricky walk into the circle. And remember, it's nighttime and they're kind of in the middle of nowhere. And so this guy, he turns his head around and sees this strange man just standing there and Scott's nowhere to be found. And so this guy, he grabs a club, like a piece of wood, and he looks at Ricky kind of menacingly, like, what Jesus. are you doing here? And Ricky, who was so caught off guard by just how big this guy was, he put his hands up and he said, I'm so sorry, Scott sent me up here. I don't know if this is the right site, I'm sorry. But just at that moment, Thank Scott you, North had Quill, finished untangling one his fishing line, and he came out of the tree line, and he patted Ricky on the back, and he said, oh, you've already met my friend Sean. And as soon as he said that, Sean looked like he basically let his guard down. You know, he put the wood down, and he stopped glaring directly at Ricky. Why do I just picture, like, some sort of, like, scenario where he's just this big guy that doesn't know anything, and then Scott's, like, just the one who calls his shots? He's just going, ugh. Uh, 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 oh, ca calm down, calm down, boo. Oh, uh, uh, no, don't worry. They're friends of a friend, friend. Oh, that that that's what I'm picturing right now. <laughs> that's what I was full on caveman mode. Oh, oh. But Ricky felt like Sean was not happy that Ricky was in his campsite. He not happy. Sean, not happy. <laughs> no, it's fine. It's fine. It's Ricky. Come on. You know Ricky. Sean mad. Sean no like. Even though clearly Scott is the reason that Ricky is in this campsite. And so Ricky just felt really uncomfortable. And at the same time, Scott is ushering Ricky closer to the campfire to take a seat next to Sean. You know, Sean's a great cook. He'll cook up this fish for us. It's going to be great. You know, take a seat. Ricky felt kind of annoyed that Scott was really forcing him to stay. But Ricky didn't want to be rude and just kind of abruptly leave. So he did I would. take a seat next to Sean, who definitely was not excited to be sitting next to Ricky. And Ricky just kind of sat there waiting to see what would happen next. And what happened next is Scott walked over to Sean and handed off all the fish that he and Ricky had caught so that Sean could begin to prepare them to cook them. And then as Ricky is still just sitting there right next to Sean, Scott walked away from the campfire up to his truck, which was parked right next to Sean's Jeep. And Scott turned on the radio and began blasting country music. And when Hell Ricky heard this yeah. music, he kind of winced. Because to him, you know, part of the reason the outdoors, the Appalachian Trail, you know, being out in nature, part of the reason it was so wonderful was for the peace and quiet. Yeah, that and so got me to go like on. borderline it. disrespectful to be out in the middle of this beautiful place. Something bad of music. And so to Ricky, he just couldn't help but feel like there's something off about these two guys. They just seem really disrespectful and kind of pushy and maybe aggressive. And so Ricky is just not happy. But again, Ricky didn't say anything and didn't attempt to... Guys, trust me, they, they would not be listening to Country Roads. They'd be listening to some, like, you know, basic-ass country music. Something about a truck. That's only, I'm trying to think of other country songs that are basic and shitty. Believe. Sweet Caroline, that's not country music. Because again, he's really hungry and so is his dog and he needs to eat that fish. A moment later, Scott walked back from the truck and took a seat next to Sean, and then he, along with Sean, pulled out their knives and began deboning the fish. And as they were doing this, Ricky again is just kind of sitting there doing nothing, and so he kind of meagerly asked, you know, hey, can you give me a knife and I'll clean a fish? Oh my god, I remember that song! Baby lock them doors and turn them lights down low. Dude. What what a jammer, dude. But Sean and Scott kind of waved him off and said, don't worry, we got this. And so Ricky just continued <laughs> dude, to Dude, people were so obsessed with that song all back he could then. watch was the flashing of the light bouncing off their blades. But eventually, Scott and Sean finished deboning all the fish, and they put their knives away. And at that point, they began cooking the fish over the open flame. Cousin and suddenly for Ricky, it felt like, you yeah. know, the mood had shifted a little bit. At least now, the two men were not fiddling around with weapons. You know, it felt kind of safe again. And so Ricky... Yeah, how about we stop fiddling around with weapons and start fiddling around with each other? You know what I'm saying? Is that where this is going? Starting to feel like this is where this is going. Began making some small talk in hopes that would kind of, you know, settle his nerves. And so Ricky told the two men about how much he loved the Appalachian Trail and how he came out here all the time for weeks at a time with his dog. And Ricky would tell the men that, you know, sometimes he felt more at home out in the wild than he did at home. It was almost like being out in nature was a religious experience.
experience for Ricky. And he would even tell Sean and Scott that sometimes when he was out in nature, he would meditate and pray and even do some chanting like part of a ritual. I mean, he was really trying to be in tune with mother nature. But as Ricky continued to tell Sean and Scott about his personal life, he noticed the two men were definitely paying attention and kind of nodding along at appropriate Pick points in the story. In but at the same time, bags. Ricky felt like... Uh, <clears throat> Craig kisses men is... Uh, no, I mean, I'm married, so... Yeah, I mean, maybe if I was single. Like these two men were also kind of looking at him like Ricky was kind of weird, as if they were not prepared to come out and say it. But after hearing all these things about his life, it was like, huh, what's going on with this guy? And so Ricky suddenly felt really embarrassed about being so open with these two guys who once again just seem like they don't quite like him or even really want him here. But luckily, right at that moment, the fish were done. And so the Thank men you, just sat her. there in silence and wolfed down the food. By the time they finished, right about 8 p.m., it was very dark outside, and Ricky at this point is just ready to go. You know, he just felt so uneasy here. And so after putting down his plate and his silverware and saying thank you to Sean and Scott for their hospitality, he quickly got up and grabbed his dog, and he began walking into the woods towards his campsite. But after okay. Ricky and his dog had walked maybe 10 or 15 feet away from this campsite, two things happened in rapid succession. Number one, Ricky suddenly stopped and turned around and looked back at the campsite. And number two, right as he did this, there was this enormous bang sound, like a small explosion that echoed through the forest. Uh, 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 run, fool. Dude, how many, how many podcasts do you have? Bro's got like seven different podcasts. The end of today's video because we're going to play a clip from. <clears throat> Bro is about grinding. Three minutes later and about four miles away from where Ricky and Sean and Scott. Glad to see you're still streaming pig. I've been a fan for years. Welcome. Well, welcome Fruit Loops. Yeah, I, I stream sometimes. There were these two women who were in their house eating dinner when they heard this sudden frantic knocking on their front door. Now, these women live in a very isolated part of the country, and so the women were very concerned. One of them rushed over to the phone just to be ready to call the police, while the other very carefully made their way towards Without the front of the house, and they kind of peered out the window, but they couldn't see anything dick. outside. It was too dark, and so they went to their door, which was still getting Thank pounded you, Juicy on Pounder. was out there, and the woman, she unlocked the door, and she opened it just a crack, and, and what she dick. saw nearly made her faint. There was a man standing on her porch who was absolutely covered in blood as if he had been fully submerged in a tank of blood. Oh. I mean, he's all red. And the man had his hand over his neck. Huh? And the woman who opened the door, she looked at him, and she saw that there was this rhythmic pulsing of blood pumping out of his neck that was in uh. time with his heart. This uh? man is clearly bleeding to death. And so the woman, she screamed for the other woman to please call 911. We have someone who's dying here. And so she began calling 911. And then the man on the porch just said, please help me. And then he said something about Dismal Creek. And then he collapsed. And this was so Which shocking man? for the woman who had opened the door. Which that man she is stood it? there staring, having no idea what to do. But then she happened to look Plot up. Plot twist, it was the dog. And she noticed there was a Jeep that was idling out on the road in front of her house that she hadn't even registered until now. And so either this guy got dropped off or he drove that Jeep. But before she could even begin to understand. Well, yeah, it's probably Ricky, guys. I'm just hoping it's not. Maybe it's like a plot twist and Ricky's actually the bad guy, you know? And what it just Surely. happened. An Maybe he was just so upset that they just gave no shits about the, the countryside and they were blaring their country music. Ricky just lost it, you know? And a whole bunch of police cars came screaming up and parked in front of her house. And then the medics got out, they rushed up, and they grabbed the bleeding man, and they put him in the ambulance, and they rushed him off. Meanwhile, not far from the house, police officers were speeding towards Dismal Creek because when the women called 911, they said, you know, this guy who's shown up on the porch bleeding said something about Dismal Creek, but they had no idea what it was about. And so instead of trying to wait to figure out what was even going on, police had basically said, let's just go to Dismal Creek and look around and see if we can figure out, you know, why someone would leave that area and show up at this house covered in blood. But as the police were making their way up this winding mountain road, they saw a truck bombing down the road coming straight at them. 
and the truck, they initially hit their brakes and right. did kind of attempt to get out of the way of the police cars. But after this truck had basically come to a stop, the driver of the truck just hit the gas all over again and they veered wildly off the side of the road into an embankment and they crashed and flipped several times and then came to a stop. And the Jesus. police officers who had veered to the side of the road to avoid getting hit by this truck, you know, they just watched this happen and they couldn't understand why the driver had gunned it again after stopping and then seemingly intentionally got drove off the road. It almost seemed like the driver was trying oh, to shit, crash. Oh shit, cops better die. That's pretty much it. Can you so hard well, better die. Yo, thank you so much. Thank you so much for dub. And so the police, they got out of their car and they approached the wrecked truck with their guns drawn. But when they looked into the vehicle, they saw there was a single occupant, the driver, and he was still somehow alive. Which one is it? So the police got him out of the vehicle and they called an ambulance. But they actually sent an officer with the ambulance to escort them because the police were actually pretty suspicious of this truck driver. Because remember, they were going up that road to get to Dismal Creek to see what had happened there that would lead to another man showing up on somebody's doorstep in the middle of the night covered in blood. And now they have this truck driver who looks like he's speeding away from Dismal Creek who crashes his Thank truck. You, Nam, you see I mean, there was no Nam, clear you, connection you, between you the truck crash and the bloody guy, but the police were suspicious that they had to be connected. So they sent the officer to the hospital as well. About 30 minutes after the truck crash. All right, all right, let me see. Let me, let me, let me use my mind's eye here. Let me see what happened. All right, so what happened here is, uh, all right, explosion, right? Loud bang, loud bang. Not a gunshot, probably not a gunshot, right? So what happened here, right? Right, right, right? What happened here, right? Right, 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 what happened here? Truck? No, not truck. What ha Right! What happened here? Uh, the, they dropped gas. What the hell are you talking about? I'm cooking up fire right now. Give me a second. Shut up. What happened here? Is they dropped something in the fire. All right? Say, say like, a, like maybe like an aerosol can, a can of WD-40 or some shit. Right? Or something like that, it blew up, right? Scott instantly died. Scott was just dead, like gone. Poof. You know, Sean, and I think it's the other guy's name, he's so big, right? He just tanked it. Bro, he tanked the whole thing. Tanked the entire shit, and he was just like, I'm fine. I'm Sean, you know? I'm huge. However, uh, a, Oh my God, I don't care. Yes, you do. Yes, you do. A piece of shrapnel. Right? A piece of shrapnel flew out. Hit Ricky. Hit Ricky Bobby right in the throat. Cut his jugular. Started... Started squirting. Okay? Right? <laughs> Shut up. Shut up. I got this. All right? And then Sean. Right? Big guy. He's a big dude. He started panicking. Right? Because he didn't know what to do. He got in the truck. Started flooring Shut it. Shut up, bitch. Shut what? up. Oh, my God. I got this. I got this. All right. He started flooring it down the road, panicking because Scott's dead. Ricky's probably dead too. He thinks he's a murderer. So he's freaking out. Right. And then he sees cops and then he's like, oh, dear God, they're here for me because they thought that that I killed him. But I Shut actually did. So oh my God. Panics. Oh my God. Panics. Drives off the road because, you know, he's big Sean. Right. He could tank. He could tank a few car rolls. Right. Gets out, brushes off, you know, the dirt, walks away just fine. Or, I mean, he's in the hospital. Shut up, bitch! Oh my the police God. left the scene oh and continued the rest Watch. of the way up the road. Watch, this will be perfectly accurate. Okay? Stop spamming. Stop spamming. <laughs> Stop it. I'm right. Shut up to Dismal Creek, and once they got up there, the police fanned out all across the area and just began looking for anything. Just any clue that might explain what the heck happened here, if anything happened at Dismal Creek flip? at all. And pretty quickly, what the, flip the police actually did find something unique. Up, In the middle bitch. of the Dismal Creek area, they found a campsite. But it was not the campsite where Sean and Scott were staying, where Ricky had gone and shared dinner with them. This was a different campsite. And not long after searching this other campsite, police concluded that whoever was staying here 
did not seem like they were mentally well. This seems like a mentally unstable and potentially dangerous person lives here. So the campsite was really simple. It was just a tent and a campfire. But when the police lifted up the flap and looked inside the tent, they found a collection of 30 knives along with a police scanner that basically picked up police radio chatter in the area so you could listen to a scanner and basically know what the police were doing in your area. Okay. There were also all these weird piles of clothing. Some were for kids, some were for adults, some were for men, some were for women. There were piles of eyeglasses and there were eight pairs of women's underwear. And then also there was a map of the Appalachian Trail inside of this tent and all over this map along Wait, wait, is Ricky the bad guy? Wait a second. Along the trail were all these spots that were circled, but there was- So no I was right at, I was literally right at first. Shut up. Shut up. So, all right. I, I, I was actually right all along. I mentioned this a long time ago that it could be Ricky. Information about what these circles meant. However, one of the places that was circled- So technically I was, was right. Creek. And then next to the map was a radio and inside the radio was a cassette. And so the police just hit play and immediately what they heard totally creeped them out because the tape sounded like some kind of satanic ritual. It was basically this one man's voice just kind of howling and chanting over and over again. But- or wait, wait, didn't they say something about that? They said something about By that. By far, the most shocking thing that was found inside of that tent was a single piece it's of the paper. It's the Ricky chanting. And this piece of paper was a birth certificate, and the name on the birth certificate was a name that basically all police in this area knew, and in fact, anybody living in or around- Oh, is he the serial killer that was mentioned in the beginning? the Appalachian Trail definitely would know this name. And the identity of this person, the name on the birth certificate, was the key to putting together all these seemingly disconnected events that had happened on this night. From the explosion when Ricky walked away from the fire, to the bloody man at the house, to the truck crash, they were all connected through this single person. A few hours earlier, okay. after Ricky had gotten up and walked away from Sean and Scott's campsite, and then after barely making it onto the trail, he had turned around and there was that loud explosion. Well, at that point in the story, Ricky, who's now looking back at the campsite and looking at Sean and Scott, he can see that the two of them, they've heard the sound too, and they were now staring at each other with looks of absolute shock and terror on their faces. But then Ricky watched as Sean reached up and touched his face and he put his hand out in front of his face and it was covered in red. And the reason for that was because Sean had just been shot in the face because that loud explosion was the sound of Ricky shooting his gun. Oh, it was a gun. Oh, you son of a bitch ball. And you can't, you can't say an explosion. All right. I was cooking. I was cooking. Damn it. At Sean. And as Sean and Scott stood there staring at each other in absolute disbelief, Ricky, who's still in the tree line, ran towards the fire and just kept on shooting. And so Sean at this point, as he sees Ricky coming into the campsite, he stands up and kind of staggers back and falls on the big ground. Sean, man. But Scott, who's not hurt at this point, he just gets up and starts running away from the campsite and Ricky turns oh, his attention man. towards Scott not and Sean, shoots at him dude. and he hits him straight in the neck and also nice in the guy. I, I know nothing about him, but he seemed like a nice dude. Somehow dear. Scott just kept on running despite these horrible wounds. And so Ricky watched as Scott disappeared appeared into the woods and then Ricky turned back to Sean who's laying on the ground and can't go anywhere he's been shot in the face and Ricky just casually raised his gun and shot Sean right in the chest but amazingly Sean after getting shot the second time it created what must have been the most extreme adrenaline rush ever because he jumped up to his feet and right in front of his attacker he just turned and sprinted to his jeep oh! he hopped inside fired it up and just sped away as fast oh, as he could shit. and when Sean flipped on his head lights and turned a corner after getting Let's away go, from the campsite, he looked down the road and he actually saw his buddy Scott who had run away first come tumbling out of the woods onto the road and so Sean who's gravely injured you know drives over next to Scott and he stops the jeep long enough for Scott to climb inside and they shut the door and they speed their way towards the nearest help which happened to be that house where those Let's two go, women Let's go Sean! Were. And so it was Scott who looked like he was drenched in blood who knocked Oh Scott! knocked on the women's door. 
Sean was down in the Jeep out on the road, but he was just too weak to get out and come up to the door as well. But when the ambulance and police arrived, they would find not only Scott up on the porch, but also Sean in the getting Jeep, and both men would be taken to the so hospital nervous. via helicopter. Well, getting your first tattoo? Hell yeah, don't be nervous, all right? It's just going to be on you for the rest of your life. And the bright side won't be as bad as my tattoo. Those who were here last stream know what I'm talking about. And then as for the man who was He's driving gotta think the truck about that, down right? the road away from Dismal Creek, who Stay then crashed it. right in front of the police, well, the driver of that truck was Ricky Williams. However, that was not his real name. There was no Ricky Williams. That was the name he just used. His real name, which was on the birth certificate that police found in that other campsite inside of the tent, was Randall Lee Smith. Ah, the there it is! Infamous Randall Lee Smith, who had murdered those two hikers not far from Dismal Creek. That double homicide had happened in 1981, and Randall was <clears throat> caught and convicted. But he was paroled 15 years later in 1996 for good behavior. And for 10 years oh after that, God. Randall lived with his mother, and he wore this electronic bracelet, and you know, he followed the rules. But by 2008, his electronic... Like, I mean, okay, it's the 80s, so I mean, I guess I could let it go. But it's like, you know, obviously, bro, if you kill once or multiple times, you're gonna do it again. Like, that's just how it works. Unless it's like, you kill someone by accident or self-defense or something. But if you're just killing someone to kill someone, you're gonna do it again. Bracelet Lock him up off. forever. And even though or Randall just end had attempted one of the to two. continue living with his mother, it just wasn't yeah, tenable. Yeah, double homicide. And they're money. like, oh, he's good. And so ultimately, he he's packed a good up boy. his things, grabbed his dog, and moved out onto the Appalachian Trail. And on May 6th, 2008, when Sean and Scott arrived in Dismal Creek to go fishing, Randall was waiting. Nobody has any idea why Randall murdered those two hikers back in 1981 or why he targeted Sean and Scott in 2008. Wait, All we you? know is that Randall Lee Smith was very mentally unwell and very likely viewed the Appalachian Trail as like his sacred place. This is his home. This is the place he loves. Did they than live? Anything. I don't know. And so maybe, you know, he felt like Sean and Scott Thank had you, somehow no disrespected for the, the Appalachian Trail and that was enough to attack them. Now, we know Sean and Scott did not do anything intentionally disrespectful to Randall because, amazingly, Sean and Scott survived this oh, attack. And they would shit. say that when they saw Randall, they just felt bad for him. They thought he was like this alcoholic drifter Let's who go. didn't have a home of his own, and so he was just living out Hell in the woods yeah, on the Appalachian dude. Trail. And so they didn't judge him. Instead, they really did just want to give him some food and spend some time with him and make him feel human again. That was it. And because Randall appeared to be this kind of small, older man, Sean and Scott, who were, you know, very big and imposing, they didn't feel threatened by this guy. As for that bizarre other campsite that police found up around Dismal Creek, the one that contained all those knives and the birth certificate, well, obviously that was Randall's campsite. And that weird cassette tape that they listened to that sounded like a satanic ritual, that was Randall going through his meditations and chants that he would do when he was out in the middle of nowhere. It was like his way of respecting Mother Nature and the Appalachian Trail. And then all those items that were found inside of his tent, the different clothes and the eyeglasses and the women's underwear, it's believed those could be Randall's other victims. However, when police pulled D- Dude, that, that is another reason why fucking uh, forests and uh, especially like, you know, huge forests like this are so goddamn scary. Th the amount of people that disappear constantly in forests are ridiculous. And the sad thing is, it's probably from people like Randy. You know, people who just walk around the forest and live off the forest and then, oh, hello, there's a victim. I'm gonna kill you real quick. No one will ever find you. All right, that's cool. All right, I'm gonna kill you. See ya. Like, that's just... Fucking scary, dude. DNA samples from the all of those scary. items that were found inside of his tent, like the clothes and the underwear and the eyeglasses. Well, those DNA samples did not match any of the missing people or murder victims in the Hypno police toad. database. And so that wasn't useful. And then also police went to all those places on that map that were circled. And with the exception of obviously Dismal Creek, they didn't find anything else at the other locations that suggested any violent event had happened there. So only Randall knows the truth, which means we will never know the truth because just four days after Randall was pulled out of that truck that he crashed, 
he died in police custody from a blood clot that formed as a result of the crash. And in those four of days, course, that man. Was in custody, of course, he gets he off like that, that, dude. There were any other victims. What a loser. Today, Sean still has a bullet in his head and in his chest, and Scott still has big scarring on his neck and on his back. But both men have made a full recovery, relatively speaking, and they still go back to Dismal Creek all Hell the time yeah, to dude. go camping and fishing. Hell yeah! Dude, what, actually, what a happy ending. What a rare happy ending to a ballin' video. Now it's time to walk away. I hope you enjoyed your stay. Did you laugh or cry or maybe subscribed? I'll thank you either way. You know I will miss you. I hope you return. Tell your friend or your mother to get me more views, please.